Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. That my friends is a real Toyota and this is of course the Yaris. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this the Toyota Yaris petrol and straight away let's open the engine bay of this vehicle. So this is the engine of the Yaris, the petrol motor known as the dual VVTi. It's not the same as VTEC and as you can see there is insulation here. The motor is actually quite silent. I love the covering here. Certainly the vehicle looks a little polarizing I would say because the lights are just too big for the body and uh, the grille is kind of small, different, chrome treatment. Lights look decent. There are DRLs over here. There's a projector set up as well, fog lights on the corner, front parking sensors and overall i would say that the yaris isn't a vehicle which comes across as very attractive especially the body kind of seems bulky from the side but the wheels which are 15 inches they look very small and typical toyota design language for the wheels similar to the one on the innova as well now these are of course small size tires because these tires are 185 60 15s meanwhile the segment is offering 16 inches now this might be one of the latest cars to be launched in the segment but actually this is one of the oldest because the Yaris was actually launched in 2013 globally and this one is the facelifted model which was launched in 2017 so yes the design is not in line with the Fortuners or the Innovas or Toyota's latest design language which happens to be a little bit more functional rather a bit more adventurous as far as we have seen because there's a bit of Lexus which is now being seen in Toyota cars now you can see side indicators placed on the outside rear view mirrors meanwhile let's open the boot right away now let me tell you that the boot isn't as big as uh, its rival however it is decent sized meanwhile it's slightly lesser than 500 liters and the spare wheel isn't an alloy so cost cutting is over there i would say the boot is decent size it's not really big could have been bigger but then there is decent amount of space in the rear firstly the door pockets aren't really big at the rear but the floor is flat the seat is upright now the seat actually folds in 60 40 split which is a nice touch and kind of first in the segment as well meanwhile here we get twin cup holders and you get headrests for all the three passengers at the rear there are lights placed here there's a hook here handle here and there's good amount of knee room on offer good amount of leg room but there is no scooped out seat bag there are no magazine holders here and this thing juts all the way behind hampering leg room for the middle passenger meanwhile there are twin 12 volt charging sockets a usb slot here would be a real nice touch but overall i would say there's good amount of space here only thing is the headroom is a bit poor and there's a dedicated ac vent here which is placed on the top which is better than having ac vents here on the bottom and these ac vents obviously work really well on the vehicle cooling the cabin in no time at all at the rear so again a very nice touch and all variants of the Yaris get seven airbags as standard which is again a very nice touch indeed so Toyota has concentrated on safety you get passive entry you get push button start door pockets are decent side at the front this is to open or close the outside rear view mirror these are the power window controls and this is obviously to lock or unlock the vehicle this is to actually adjust the outside rear view mirror and there is no dead pedal on offer which is disappointing this is to open the boot there's a small storage space here like really small this is to turn off the parking sensor or turn it on this is the headlight leveler engine start stop button here and yeah that's about it now this is not the top of the line variant unfortunately it happens to be the v trim not the vx because the vx also gets electric adjust seats which is again something unique in the segment and this is obviously for the cruise control there's a dummy button here anyways let's get inside seats seem comfortable of course they are very comfortable let me take the liberty of pushing them all the way behind now the glove box is really decent sized and it gets the cooling function as well it gets a split glove box because there's space here as well i mean it's good that toyota has given it compartments meanwhile you obviously get a mirror here but there's no light same is the case here there's a mirror and there's a toll receipt holder here there's already a toll receipt right now there's a handle for the driver to hold on to as well there's a sunglass holder here and there are light placements here which are operated like this and unfortunately it misses out on an auto dimming inside a rear view mirror so the dashboard seems nice in terms of design but the steering is just way too far behind unfortunately so yeah you have to really stretch your hands while driving and it should have got adjustment for reach as well it doesn't meanwhile the gear lever is also nice to hold reverses on that side so you have to lift this and then slot it into reverse and when you slot it into reverse the reverse parking camera gets activated as well ironically though there are no guidelines which are visible on the reverse parking camera it gets front parking sensors it gets reverse parking sensors it gets a climate control ac the ac works brilliantly well these are actually the controls for the air conditioning and nice buttons are placed here this is the hazard light switch and overall the design of the car does look very nice indeed in terms of the interior because something from lexus seems to have been inspired over here in the center console and you can see it floats like this all the way down and you've got twin cup holders here and there's space to keep a mobile phone here there's a 12 
12 volt charging socket here and below the front center armrest there's nothing but just space to keep stuff but unfortunately this armrest is way behind all right it's way behind unless you are tall you are not going to use it and even if you use it just for your elbow it's not going to be for your hand that's how far behind this is unfortunately obviously steering mounted audio controls these are for the audio controls as well as the phone controls this is to navigate through this multi-information display which by the way is uh, yeah decent size as well so you get a lot of information there as well eco savings you can adjust brightness driving information it'll tell you average speed it'll tell you average fuel economy average driving time as well so yeah plenty of information there in the console and you got a trip meter you got a digital fuel meter but above that you get an analog speedometer an analog tachometer on the left telltale lights placed all on the top automatic headlights automatic wipers these are the controls for the headlight these are the controls for the wipers the wipers work decently well in this vehicle and the steering actually feels nice but it doesn't get any leather touch although they have given this stitching to make you feel so but no it doesn't even the seats are getting the stitching but there is no leather in this vehicle and this is obviously for the cruise control the horn isn't that great however this infotainment system is a seven inch unit it misses out on apple carplay it misses out on android auto connectivity but get something known as mirror cast what it lets you do is mirror your phone there in the infotainment system and obviously there are plenty of features here as well there's a dvd player too bluetooth audio aux phone radio usb ipod all these functions but unfortunately it only gets one usb which happens to be here and an aux that's it there's only one usb inside this vehicle which is absolutely shocking in 2019 when cars are coming with like 50000 usb slots all right let's play an audio right away <laughs> Audio quality is decent. It's not great. I would say just about average. This is a seven-inch touchscreen infotainment system. While the touch is good, the screen isn't that visible in the day, and that's another problem with the instrument cluster as well. Because in the day, there's just too much glare on it. Meanwhile, Toyota has actually given it real nice windows because these windows they cut out the outside noise. They also cut out the outside rays, the UV rays, and of course harmful rays. So that again is a very nice touch. And all I would say, the cabin is loaded with a lot of features. It's comfortable. Base treatment gives it an airy feeling. as well however it could have done with slightly more features although it is feature loaded there are certain features which i would have liked anyways let's see how is it to drive here we go yeah that is amount of wheel spin on offer which means there's a lot of wheel spin on offer and this is powered by the same 1.5 liter petrol engine which also does duty on the etios however toyota has really reworked this motor to give it more output now this one produces 107 horsepower and 140 newton meters of torque now, being a japanese engine it is extremely refined lower down but in the top end it becomes very vocal and it feels very good to drive on part throttle inputs which means in the city it is great however once you push it in the mid range you realize that the mid range has nothing much to offer because the mid range feels kind of flat here and it's really in the top end that it becomes alive so post 4000 rpm there's a lot of get go in this motor and it redlines with a lot of enthusiasm as well however redline is kind of abrupt because you know the rev limiter cuts in very abruptly in this vehicle so as far as engine goes refinement yes mid range lacking top end is where it shines typical japanese motor everything is in the top the more you rev it the more it is going to reward you higher gears are a bit too tall for my liking which means that you really have to downshift actually you really have to downshift to make a quick overtake that is one slight issue with this vehicle so right now if i want to make a quick overtake well i'm waiting 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 still waiting still waiting now after 4000 rpm there it picks up pace and goes all the way till it's almost 6 and a half thousand rpm red line so performance isn't the best here but it is more than enough for a person who really won't be taking it on the highway much although on the highway also as long as you're okay with downshifting there is adequate performance on offer overall refinement yes could have been better in the top end but i would say this motor does the job pretty well although a diesel should have been offered now this manual gearbox is better than the cvt i feel because obviously you can control the gears and the good thing is that this 6 speed gearbox is very slick shifting the clutch is also on the lighter side the throws are very short the ride quality of this car is absolutely brilliant i mean it rides supremely well it absorbs almost everything in its stride and there's a lot of comfort on offer because the suspension is on the softer side and that soft suspension can be felt when you come around the corner because there's a lot of body roll on offer and making matters worse is of course the steering because the steering although doesn't feel light at lower speeds it just doesn't weigh up at higher speeds it feels lifeless it doesn't offer much feel or feedback as such and in terms of weight this is among the heaviest car in the segment which does well for its high speed stability because the yaris does remain glued to the road at higher speeds down to second and 
there post 4000 rpm it starts picking up pace red lining close to six and a half thousand rpm when you go easy on the throttle now the eco light blinks okay in terms of uh, fuel economy better fuel economy and this returns a fuel economy of around 12 to 13 kilometers per liter which is decent not the best still not the worst in the segment the braking pedal is just too sensitive you try to apply a little moderate braking and it start braking heavily all the braking power is really very good because this gets all wheel discs and there's good amount of grip from the tires as well the yaris is certainly not a good car around the corners because the handling isn't that great it's not a fun vehicle and it doesn't give you much feel and feedback around the corners right now i'm picking it up in second gear come on wake up wake up wake up wake up wake up and now it's like vvt i kicked in you there it responds and makes a lot of noise now i absolutely love the sound from this motor because i feel it does sound nice however 0 to 100 kilometers per hour takes almost 12 and a half seconds which makes it the slowest car in the segment how can a japanese car be so slow i still cannot understand revving the motor to almost six and a half thousand rpm and there i love how the performance is great in the top end however low end and mid range could have been better because that's what people actually use in day to day driving so as you can see the toyota yaris petrol manual is decent it's not something which is spectacular by any means of imagination and dare i say it actually the cvt is slightly better than the manual which i've never said in my life oh my god what am i even talking and here we go it's been it's been it's been the reason i'm saying that the cvt does a better job is because the cvt gearbox uh, you know masks the lack of performance slightly better than what the manual can do because in the manual you realize you are like you know hitting the accelerator hard but it's just not responding the way you would expect that is one big problem with the yaris it could have done with a better engine especially when honda has set the benchmark with the vtec motor not now but since a real long time now and when i say that it doesn't really corner well well i'm not even kidding okay it has so much body roll steering has no feel or feedback as such yes in terms of comfort this car certainly excels but as far as uh, performance goes around the corners or you know feel or driving fun goes this is just so lacking okay i am in second gear right now all right we are in second gear we're going to go through this corner with a little bit of enthusiasm you can see that it just doesn't give you the kind of feel or feedback you would expect which is kind of disappointing but that brings me to the price of this vehicle starts at 11 lakhs for the base variant goes all the way till 16.6 six lakhs for the top of the line yaris with cvt vx which has plenty of features which makes it the most expensive car in the segment but it does offer more features and toyota's bulletproof reliability and of course it also gets the option of seven years warranty comes with a three-year unlimited kilometer warranty as standard over speed breakers there is no problem because yeah it has decent amount of ground clearance taking a u-turn easy peasy steering is a bit on the heavier side i would say but only thing is the heavier steering should have weighed up better at higher speeds other than that i think the yaris steering certainly needs a lot of changes because i mean just look at the city steering it is fun okay we don't want another car with the steering of the verna do we no we do not we want the yaris to offer some feel and feedback which it doesn't unfortunately so the yaris is actually offered in eight variants four for the manual and four for the cvt automatic and i would straight away say that this is a car for those who really do not like driving at all or who have no interest in cars whatsoever but they want a vehicle which has a lot of peace of mind which is safe and that is where where the yaris stands out because it's a no nonsense vehicle it is a car which will keep running endlessly because obviously it has a toyota quality and reliability as well but just don't expect it to have any emotional appeal whatsoever so guys this is my review of the toyota yaris petrol manual and if you like this video you know what you have to do give it a thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys in the next video real soon but if you want a petrol car the best petrol engine in the segment it's not the city it is that the vento tsi that 1.2 liter motor is just such a gem anyways guys bye bye